In this session, we'll look at how to process drone captured imagery using surveyed ground control points. As you can see, I'm starting out here in Civil 3D. I've got a drawing open on screen. I'm going to use this drawing just to give you an idea of what our site looks like. This is the site that was captured from the drone. Now, this drawing has a coordinate system assigned. If I come over to the Settings tab and right-click on the drawing name and choose Edit Drawing Settings, right here we can see the coordinate system. It's an 83 Arkansas State Plain North Zone U.S. foot. Let's hit Cancel. This site is located in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Since I have that coordinate system assigned to this drawing, I can turn on the aerial imagery just to kind of give us an idea of what the site looks like. If you look closely, you can see this drawing includes some points as well. These represent ground control points that were collected out in the field. Those points were then inserted into this drawing so we can get a rough idea of where they're located on the site. There are four ground control points. You can see one here in the southeast corner. This is point number 30. I'm showing the northing, easting, and elevation for that control point. If I pan over, we can see point number 31 was also placed in the road. And if I drag up, we'll find two other control points here on the north side of the site. So this is our site. Let me mention that the imagery has already been captured. I'm going to bring up Windows Explorer, and then I'll jump into my data set directory, and we'll go to the Images folder. In here, we can see the images that were collected. I'm going to double click on one of these. And as I click the forward button, we can see the path that the drone took as it was taking this imagery. Let's zoom in. Right here we can see control point number 30 in the southeast corner. Basically this is just an area that was painted in the roadway and then this location was collected by a surveyor. That is consistent for the other control points as well. I'm going to continue to step through and you can kind of see the lawnmower pattern that the drone followed as it was collecting these images. Let's close this. We'll look at one more thing. I'm going to right click on an image and I'll choose properties. From here I'll choose the details tab and I will drag down. And right here we can see that when the images were collected, the drone also passed along GPS information in the form of metadata. So each image has a unique latitude, longitude, and altitude. Knowing this, I could stitch these images together without ground control points and have a fairly accurate mesh and point cloud. That being said, if I want this data to align to my survey, I will need to use those ground control points. Let me click OK, and I'll close this. To start my process, I'm going to bring up a recap. In Recap, I'll choose New Project, and then I'll select Photo to 3D. This will launch Recap Photo. Let me apologize here up front. Due to my screen size, this interface is going to be a little bit hard to see everything, so we may have to drag it up and down on occasion. I'm going to start in the Create 3D area. This is where I can select my imagery. Notice there are two options depending on how the imagery was collected. Since these images were collected using a drone, I'll select Aerial and very minimalist interface here. I can click this button to add photos. I can click this button to add ground control points. Let's add photos first. I will then press Control A to select all of my images, and I'll click Open. This will open all of the images in the interface. Once I have the images open, I could just come down and click Create. Remember that these images have latitude, longitude, and elevation on them. Recap Photo can use that information to stitch these together to create a mesh. Once again, since I want this data to align to my survey information, I'm going to add ground control points as well. I'll do that by coming over and clicking Ground Control Points. At the top, I would select my desired coordinate system. Now you can see that's already set for me. I created one of these a little bit earlier. If I wanted to select a different coordinate system, I could click this ellipsis button and I could drag up and down. You'll find many of the same coordinate system options here that we have available in Civil 3D and Map 3D and InfraWorks. I'm going to hit Cancel. Down below is where I can define my control points, X, Y, and Z coordinates. If I choose Add Row, each row represents a ground control point. From here, if I wanted this to be a manual process, I could simply double click and I could enter the X, Y, and Z information for each point. Instead, we can do things a little bit faster. I'm going to choose Delete Row. Now let me mention we have to have at least three ground control points. I have four in this case, so that's perfect. Let's jump over to Civil 3D, and I am simply going to export these points. We'll do that by going to the Output Ribbon tab, and then I'll choose Export Points. I will export these using the format Point Number Easting Northing Elevation, comma delimited. This is the format that Recap Photo was looking for. I will then choose my destination file. I'm going to save this in my dataset folder, and we'll call this Control Points. It'll have a CSV extension. Let me click Open. And I don't have to use the limit feature. These are the only four points in this file. Likewise, I'm not going to do any adjustments to these. I'll click OK. Then we'll jump back to Recap Photo. And I'm going to bring back Windows Explorer. We'll jump into the dataset directory. 
and then we'll open this point file that I just created. I'm going to right click and choose open with notepad. And I can close Windows Explorer. To add my ground control points, I will simply select this text. I'll right click and choose copy. And then I'll click over here, right click and choose paste. Now the trick is to assign each of these ground control points to those marked locations on the site. I'm going to start by selecting ground control point number 30. You can see that you can easily select these just by clicking on them. I'm going to select number 30 and then I'm going to turn off filter by GPS. This allows me to see every image that was collected and then I will drag down until I find an image that contains that point. If you remember that one was in the southeast corner. I'm going to click right here and then I'll zoom in. I'll click to set my ground control point. I can then use this area in the lower left to fine tune that location just by rolling the wheel forward and back to zoom in and out or dragging back and forth. I can click done when finished. Now I need to locate that GCP on at least three more images. So before we finish this up, I'm going to click place GCP on three more images. And then I'm going to choose filter by GPS. This will reduce the number of images to only images that contain that ground control point. This makes it very easy when selecting additional photos. I'm going to select this one and I'll zoom in and we'll pick that point, we'll fine tune it and click done. I will then select maybe this image. I'll zoom in and grab that point and we'll fine tune it and I'll click done. Let's do one more, maybe this one. I'll zoom in and we'll set and then I can fine tune and click done. Once I've placed it in four images, I can choose done and then you'll see a green check. In fact, if I hover, this will say that that ground control point is valid. I would then do the same thing for the next three points. Let's do 31. I'll select this one. And then if you remember 31 was at the end of the roadway here, I'm going to click this image and I will place and I'll click done. Now I need to place it in at least three more images. So I will choose that option. And then I'll say filter by GPS. This shows me only the images containing that ground control point. So let's use this photo. I'll click done. Maybe we'll do this one. I'll click done and we'll do this one. And I'll click done. I will then click done when I'm finished and I have now set that ground control point. Remember, I need at least one more ground control point. I'm going to do these remaining two rather than having you watch me do that in real time. We'll simply speed things up to get through that process a little faster. Here I am selecting the first image for ground control point 32. I then will select the next three images that contain that same control point. When finished, I'll choose done and then we'll jump to number 33. I'll select the first image containing that ground control point. We'll set it and then I will grab three more images that contain that same point. When I'm finished creating ground control points, I will choose done. I will then select create. I can then give my project a name. I'm going to call this AR underscore site. I can then choose the assets I'd like created when this data is processed. By default, I'm going to get a mesh. I can also select an RCS file. This would represent my point cloud. I can also choose to create a high quality ortho aerial image. Finally, I will select my target coordinate system. We'll use that same coordinate system that we've been working with. I'll click OK. Now, before I click start, note that this is a cloud-based service. It will cost me 12 cloud credits to complete. The number of cloud credits will depend on the number of images being processed. Let's click start. And back here in the interface, you can see that it has started to upload those images. During the upload process, you do not want to close Recap Photo, otherwise it will pause the upload. Once the images are uploaded to the cloud, the processing will begin. You can then close the application. The time it takes to create the 3D mesh and other deliverables will vary depending on the number of images. As a rough example, this data set includes 87 images and takes about two hours to process in the cloud. Now, rather than waiting for this current process to complete, over here to the right, you can see that I have a finished example of the same data set. Using this icon, I can download the assets I selected to my local machine. Once again, I'm going to select my dataset folder. Right here, you can see one that I downloaded a little bit earlier. That being said, let's go ahead and complete the download process so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to choose Select Folder to place the download in my dataset directory. The thumbnail will then keep us updated on the status of the download. Once the data has been downloaded to my machine, if I bring up Windows Explorer and we go to that dataset folder, here you can see the new one. Let's jump in the one I did a little bit earlier. 
Right here, you'll find the recap mesh. We'll also find a zip file containing the point cloud. There's a zip file containing the ortho photo. And then I've got a zip file containing a report. Let's take a look at the mesh. I'm going to close this. Now I could choose the load model button on the left and select that RCM file from the directory, but I don't have to. Notice that when you download assets from the cloud, Recap Photo creates a shortcut to the mesh right here in the interface. If I click this icon, I can open it. Let's drag this up just a little bit. I can then review my mesh. You'll find the mouse controls in Recap Photo are very similar to the controls we have in Recap. If I roll the wheel forward and back, I can zoom in and out. If I hold the right mouse button down, I can orbit. If I hold the middle mouse button or the wheel down, I can pan. So using these tools, I can review the mesh that was created. Let's go to a top view. I'll do that by clicking the top hotspot here on the view cube, and we'll zoom in on this roadway. So even though this data was collected using images, I have the ability to extract valuable information from this model. Just for a second, we'll come over and click the Analyze button, and I'll choose Measure. I will then select my desired units. I'm going to choose feet, and maybe we can find out the width of a lane. I will click one point on the edge, and then we'll click the center line. I can see that lane is about 13 feet wide. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. Maybe we can find out what the back-to-back -back width is. I can see that is almost 28 feet. We'll pan over and do one more measurement. Maybe I'm interested in this sidewalk. I'll click one side and the other, and we can see that walk is approximately five feet wide. Note that we have only looked at one of the measurement tools at this point. There are a ton of other features we could access within this environment, but I'm afraid we'll have to save those for another day. After our quick review of this mesh, I would like to examine the other assets that were created from my aerial images. If you remember, I also have a survey-aligned point cloud and a high-resolution orthographic aerial image of this site. These assets would be perfect to incorporate into a Civil 3D or InfraWorks model. We'll do that in the next session. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.